Hello, everyone. Welcome to this session on alternative visits. I'm happy to introduce Amber Sanchez, one of our RN care managers located in the Claremore Family Practice um, Clinic. Amber, why don't you tell us about alternative visits? Thank you, Verda. Um, so I'm going to talk about the alternative visits. And just to start with the definition of alternative visits, an alternate, or alternative visit is a visit that is different than the traditional office visit. It meets the needs of the patient population and increases access to the care team practitioner. And when we're considering this, we should think about the quadruple aim. We're aiming for our better outcomes, lowering our costs, improving the patient experience. And then we also have to think on the side of improving our clinician experience as well. So why are these important? Well, we get to gather some information on how to help the patient and the caregivers involved. And then this increases the access to care based on the patient need. We're also engaging the patient and caregiver into their care plan. And we're reducing those emergency department and hospital use, which also relates to the reduced cost. So types of alternative visits, telephone visits, telehealth and e-visits, nurse visits, group visits, and home visits. And we're going to visit each one of these individually. So a telephone visit is a phone call made to a patient or caregiver um, to assist on certain needs. The positives of this is that it's easy. It requires minimal preparation. Um, this is more used for like updating, providing information, follow-up. Um, it also can be very timely. It can be any length of time, completed at any time. Um, it, sometimes we have patients that are on our phone for maybe one minute, and then sometimes we have them a little bit longer. But we can do this at any time and work it in our schedule. Um, also, access. Phones are generally ac easily accessible to most people. Um, the negatives is miscommunication. This kind of is um, a duplicate thing. I look at miscommunication as sometimes they may not pick up their phone or we may be playing phone tag. The other side of that is when we're discussing something with a patient, they may not understand what we're saying and we may not be able to pick up what they're saying. Um, so that's one of the negatives. Um, also, it may not be appropriate for the patient caregiver needs or concerns. Um, they may need a more detailed visit, which we'll talk about those other options here in a second. Um, also, a lack of nonverbal communication. Sometimes the nonverbal communication is the most important part, and we can see do they really understand what we're saying um, and get, uh, understand everything that we're wanting to tell them, and that they can also see our face as well and understand what we're trying to say. Um, telehealth and e-visits. These are interactive audio or video telecommunications. Um, this is in real time, so just think of like a FaceTime. This is, that's an example of this. They can be very useful. The positives, you're able to see the patient. You get to see more of those nonverbal cues, mostly their face and maybe the upper half of the body. So we don't get everything, um, but we get a little bit more than we would with a telephone visit. We also reach the patients and able to make it to the office, you know, due to limited transportation or the reduced ability to travel. Um, it's also a big deal to consider this for rural patients. Um, that live out a little bit further, we may be able to con connect with them. Um, the negatives, though, is that the technology is needed. Um, a lot of times they have to be technologically savvy. A good idea is to set this up in office and in person um, before you try and send them out and use it at their home. Um, it can require the patient and caregiver to set it up if you don't do it in the office, and then they have to log in and they have to be able to operate this as well. We do have um, Chiron Health that we can use here um, with Utica Park. Um, to be able to connect with patients. So we've used that a couple of times with quite a few of them. So a nurse visit, um, meeting with nurse in office to provide a top of service. This can be education, wound care, medication management, administering immunizations, and the list goes on. Um, the positives is this is in person, um, verbal and nonverbal cues. Um, you can see everything, and you can kind of discuss things with the patient in real time. Um, the reduction of miscommunication is good because you're in person, you're seeing if they're able to comprehend what you're saying, and the, the questions can go back and forth very quickly. Um, this also establishes relationship and trust. Sometimes this is the first time that you're meeting with a patient. Um, so this is a big time to be able to go ahead and develop that relationship with them and um, get them to open up a little bit further. And the good thing to know is that this doesn't need to be just a one-time thing. You can always meet with a patient and when they come into the office and do a quick nurse visit with them, and that just continues to build that relationship. The negative, though, it does require the patient to come to the office, but sometimes the patients want that one-on-one -on -one communication with you and face-to-face. 
Um, another negative can be that the time needed to assist the patient. I'm sure we've all been in a situation where you want to meet with a patient for 5, 10, 15 minutes, and it ends up being a 30-minute to an hour conversation because there's needs that come up. The good thing is, though, you, you get to everything taken care of in that time. Group visits and education. Um, this is a visit with multiple patients and caregivers to address their topic of concern. An example would be getting everybody together for um, like diabetes education or COPD management. The positives are you reach a larger amount of people. You also have peer-to-peer -peer teaching, so patients may actually talk with each other during this time and say, hey, this is my experience, this is what happened, and um, maybe that will help you. Also, it's that face-to-face -face communication. You're getting to see the verbal cues and the nonverbal cues and everything. Um, the negative is it's not private. Sometimes our patients want that private setting that they can discuss things with you. Um, I usually will say after a group visit, have a little bit of time allotted so that you can meet individually with these patients if they require it. Um, also, the patient caregiver may need a little bit more detailed visit due to the specific needs. This is more um, in consideration of those people that just need a little extra support and they need a little bit more reinforcement. So a home visit this is actually one of my favorite visits, but it's a visit in person by the care team member to a patient caregiver in their home. Um, this can be their place of residence, it can be a private home, an apartment, assisted living, rehabilitation. It can be wherever they're residing in that moment. Um, the positive is, is you get to see the patient face-to-face -face in their environment. Um, you're also able to see concerns in the home and discuss it with the patient and caregiver. Just for an example, you might ask a patient, do you have steps leading into your home? And they may say yes, um, and then you go out to their house and you find out that they don't just have steps, they actually live on the third floor of an apartment building. Um, but you don't get to see that whenever you're interacting with them, so you can see where the communication sometimes is better if you're going to their home, um, especially if you're dealing with patients that have a little bit higher risk and need that extra support. The negatives, on the other hand, it does require a little bit more time um, and the access for the care team member, it may block us out of being out of the office and being able to um, help out in the office, but at the same time, those positives can be very, very beneficial for the patient. Um, also, we're looking at a negative as far as location. So caregivers are a huge part of this. Um, their involvement, and I'll just give you a definition of caregivers, they're broadly defined as family member, friends, or neighbors who provide unpaid assistance to a person with a chronic illness or disabling condition. So that is just broad definition of how many people are involved in caring for a patient. It's a wide variety of people. Um, involving the caregivers, it can help with the care of the patient overall. Um, and I definitely bolded the caregiver word in here because they are so important. And they can be overlooked sometimes, but they can be that glue that keeps everything together. So always consider them as being a resource that you can go to and help the patient um, overall with their experience as well. Also consider your resources. So you're not the only one that's out there. Um, your physician and your physician team are going to be very beneficial to help you in taking care of the patient. Other providers that are involved in the care as well. Um, the caregivers, like I mentioned, they're extremely important. Transitional care nurses, the high-risk care manager, um, they are often available to be able to help with some of these patients that need the extra resource, social work, home health, insurance plans, community resources. We also have our diabetic educators and our nutritionists that are going to be beneficial for us when we need help with these patients. And these are just my references. And thank you so much. Thank you, Amber. Thank you, Meredith.